All right, today we're going to focus on trying to write equations that represent real-world situations. So we're going to use some story problems here, and we're going to try to write the equation that's going to represent that situation. Today we're not so much focused on trying to find the answer. We just want to write the equation that represents it. So our first problem here says Brandon and Jerry like to play video games. Brandon has V video games and Jerry has 29 video games. Together they have a total of 73 video games. So the first thing that we want to do is identify the variable or our unknown. In this problem here they have already told us that we don't know how many video games that Brandon has but it can be represented by the letter V. So V is going to represent the video games that Brandon has. The things we do know is this 29 here represents the number of video games that Jerry has. We also know that altogether they have a total of 23 video games. So again, a total means that's what happens when we add them together. So for today, for this problem, we're going to have to use addition to figure out how to write this equation. So we want to figure out the total number of video games, and we know that when we take Brandon's and Jerry's together, that it's going to equal a total of 73. So we're going to take V, which is representing Brandon's, and we're going to add that to the 29 that we know Jerry has. And then that's going to equal our total of 73 video games. Now from here I could use inverse operations and I could subtract 29 from both sides to get V on a side by itself, but we're not as concerned about the answer right now. What is important to notice is that this V is not on a side by itself yet. It's still in the middle of this equation because we're trying to represent this story right up above exactly like it's said. And this is saying that when we add them together, they have a total of 73 video games. So for this one here, this would be our final answer. And we're going to just leave it like this for today. We're not going to try to solve for that variable. In this problem here, this one says Kendall wants to play several games of laser tag. She has $35 to play G games. Each game of laser tag costs $5. So again, we want to write an equation that's going to represent this. Our unknown in this one right now is this G, which represents the number of games that she's going to play. Now we have to do a little bit of, of analyzing while we read this, because we need to figure out what this $35 means. It doesn't directly tell us, but if we read about it and think about the situation, it says she has $35 to play the games. So that means at most she can spend $35 while playing laser tech. Down below we also have a $5 down here and this is telling us that each game is going to cost $5. So that means for every game that she wants to play she has to pay $5. So the word each, if we think back to our vocabulary, each is going to imply multiplication. So when we write this equation we can take 5, which is the cost of a game, times the number of games that Kendall wants to play. So times G, we don't know how many games she's going to play. And that has to equal, at the very most, she can only spend $35 because that's all the money that she has. So we come up with the equation 5 times G equals 35. And again, we could use the inverse operations. We could divide by 5 on both sides and figure out that G equals 7. So she could play 7 games. But again, the most important part that we're focusing on right now is just writing this equation here. And you'll notice that G is not on a side by itself yet because we want the equation to represent exactly what we see above. 